Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast and uh, we're filming this one and this is what we tend to do a lot of these days. They're good to watch um, and today especially good to watch because I'm here at Nikon's Innovation Centre. Um, Nathan, where are we? Rotherham or Sheffield? Or Sheffield City Region. Okay, so, Sheffield, yeah, technically, Sheffield City. Technically Rotherham, but just on the outskirts of Sheffield. And it's a fantastic site, this, isn't it, for you guys to be positioned here? I, personally, great location. You know, it's at the heart of advanced manufacturing in the UK. You, you've got the AMRC, you've got Rolls Royce, you've got Boeing, you've got some, you know, some really big names and some important work for the rest of the world done here in the UK. Yeah, it really is a, a fantastic place you can visit here any time to the Nikon Innovation Centre. So coming up in the next 30 minutes, I've got two gentlemen with me, Nathan, who's already spoken from uh, Nikon. We've got Jamie from Claro Precision. Uh, we've been here today filming uh, and talking and discussing the relationship between the two companies, which is a big message for, uh, from Nikon. And it's a big reason to come here and visit to, uh, to really show, Nathan, if, if people have got manufacturing problems or issues they want to solve or just simply want to improve productivity, this is a place to be, isn't it? Sure. We, we, we make sure we have a full range of, of machine tools and, and different solutions here. So no matter what industry you're in, what machine tool platform you're using, you know, as long as you're in manufacturing, that there should be something for you to see here. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, I get to you at last. Sorry to leave you sitting there for a minute yeah. or two. Um, would you like to introduce yourself uh, to our audience and so close I'm, to the uh, mic if you can? I'm uh, Jamie. I'm a manufacturing engineer. We work for Claro Precision Engineering, which is a subcontract manufacturing company in Nairsborough. Um, we do everything, bit of aerospace, subsea, um, medical, you name it, we'll what's the what, What's the best bit? What's, what's the best work you do? Uh, what's the nicest looking parts that you make? I, to be honest, all of it. Is it? You know, if it's not right, make it bright. <laughs> you're not saying you don't. Ma- you're no, not saying you make it wrong. No, no, no <laughs> definitely not. But yeah, uh, we, we know we do. We are very good at manufacturing aluminium. So yeah, um, Claro Precision. Uh, from, from from my younger days, going back probably a couple of decades ago, um, you guys are now part of a group, aren't you? Yes, because you are. used to be an independent, but you're now now a group. Is that so right? So now we're owned by a company called Pexian Group, uh, and they have a number of. Uh, precision machining companies, electronics companies, fabrication companies that kind of dabble in a bit, just about a bit of everything. And how do you fit in that group? Because how do they select? I know they're, they're, they're quite prime on making sure they've got really good fit businesses, aren't yeah, they? So, so as, a, as a precision uh, machining company, I think there's five precision mach- or six precision machining companies. And we kind of all just about do a bit of them. They're all subcontract com- companies. Um, and it was supposed to be a one-stop shop. So if you want some manufacturing, some machining, that you want curtains on with a bit of fabrication, you can come to the Pexian Group and we should be able to offer you just about everything. Okay, now coming up in this podcast, we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the guys about their relationship there and some of the, the, the problems and the issues and the things that um, Nick and have solved. Before we do that, Nathan, you did start, and, and we had a very quick overview of what we've got here, but... I think, I think it deserves a bit more time spent on it because it is terrific, isn't it? I mean, tell, sure. tell our audience, for people that haven't seen the videos that we've done or have not been here before, what is here and what can people see? So the Nikon Innovation Centre is a, a big open plan, really demonstration of, of the best that, that we have to offer to offer industry. We have a, a range of machine tool platforms. Uh, we have a range of accessories. So everything from, from tool holding solutions, rotary tables, presetters, angle heads, tool management software, but all of this to form a, a complete solution that we can demonstrate here. So no matter what you're producing, uh, what material, what sort of machining platform, horizontal, vertical, fourth, fifth axis, we can replicate that and we can demonstrate to you real advantages and, and improvements that we can make. We have a team of consultant engineers, and the idea is you, know, you could visit our innovation center with, with a problem or, or a process that maybe has been in production for a long time, but you just want to improve, take some time out, become more efficient, more sustainable. Bring that to us, we'll sit down with you, we'll review your process, and we'll use our, our complete catalog, um, which is very big for anyone that, that hasn't seen it before. Um, suggest maybe you know a, a few measures how we could take some time out improve your process parameters for example and then we'll test it here 
you know, well, we'll, we'll demonstrate it. Well, that's the thing. I, I walk around here, and, and and you've said it yourself, um, Jamie, and I'm sure you <clears throat> you'll contribute in a minute along these lines. Is there's no it, there's no biasness, is there? You've got a real selection of. It's like you've gone to market and said, it's not about the brand. It's about the machine, and it's about you know what this offers to an engineer. For me, it's about the best solution for the job, and actually. Everyone really has something to offer the market. You know, there are different uh, parts of the market, different products, different processes. So there's no one solution or one size fits all approach um, in engineering. You know, we're engineers, we like to solve problems. That's, that's what we do. And, and the only way we're going to do that is with a range of different solutions. Uh, you talk about big and small. That's not, that's not very small, is it? You see yeah. the size of that? Yes. I, I mean, just, just tell, I mean, have you installed many of these? Uh, no, not a lot, but that's that's on the larger end of the spectrum. Um, that, that's pretty much the largest five-axis rotary that we offer. I mean, what um, would you be doing to entertain having one of these on a on a machine? I mean, is this part a good a good example? Uh, well, yeah, a good example is a, a, a housing, you know, a fan housing, or, or certainly large oil and gas um, oil and gas components, that that sort of thing. Mm. Again, the reality is you can take that as a fourth and fifth axis and add it to maybe an existing three axis machine tool. So when you're talking on that sort of scale, you know, a machine tool is going to be a reasonably significant, probably remodeling your factory kind of investment, mm -hmm. whereas something like this can, can add and improve capability on that existing platform. Um, and it's always good to hear it from, from yourself, Nathan, and from Nick. And, but let's hear it now from, from yourself, Jamie. What... What excited you about coming here and what was your first experience when you walked through these doors? And if you could get close to the mic, that would help. That would help. It's a, it's a one-stop shop, essentially. You walk through the door, the building looks fantastic. The equipment that they have on show is brilliant. You know, we already use rotary tables from Nikon. We have a Nikon presetter, uh, but everything's here. We have a Matsura machine, which they also have one here. So getting them to do a demo on something that it's very similar to what we already have is, is nice and easy. It's, you know, it's a... So have you had an example, and is there an example you could maybe tell our audience of, of a part that you had, a problem that you had, or, or you know, or you wanted to make something quicker, or, you know, that, that you came here and, you, and, and it actually happened? So we, we manufacture uh, some subsea components, and uh, we, we weren't such a problem as such. It was... Um, we were just looking for improvements. So we spoke to our rep from Nikon. He invited us down, says, look, you know, come in, see what we can offer you. Give us a good tour around the factory, he showed. Uh, we gave him the drawings, gave him the models. He says, look, we've got this. You know, we can give it a go. Give it a try, see what we can do for you. And, and give us the detail then, if you can. I mean, you know, what, what did they improve? What did you challenge them with? What was the, um, the operations that you needed to get out of it or, you know? So it was, a, it was a roughing cycle. So we were machining a pocket out using a standard ER system. And uh, we now moved on to a Nikon Slim Chuck with an SK eight degree collet system. And uh, it's gone from uh, 650 meters, millimeters a minute to uh, 1,800 millimeters a minute. Okay, wow. But it's not just the metal removal rate. It's the tool life that you gain from it as well. It's just about five times better than it was before. Okay. So it's, so, a, it's, a, it's a big win. So three times faster and five times better tool life. Yes. And did you come here and see this kind of in action here? Yes, you gave, so you knew, knew, knew it was going to work. Yeah, we came and got demos, not on our particular part, but we have we've been here. They've shown us bits and pieces and said, "Look, you know, we can do it for you. It's not a problem." Mm. Came in and gave us a trial. We ran it, and we were happy with it straight away. And, and Nathan, is this a prime example of of something that you've done and delivered here? And, and that being one, is there any others that jump out in your mind that you think, you know? Um, I don't know. That was a really difficult engineering solution that we provided and we solved. I think quite often it's it's the tool life. It's it's people take for granted what they have on the machine tool. Um, you know, this process, this is how fast we can run this process. We've engineered it for years and years and years. But you're engineering within certain parameters, which maybe you can push the boundaries of that a little bit. So again, it is quite a common one for us where we'll say actually a few small changes, a few small improvements. You know, you've spent all this money on a machine tool you probably spend quite a lot of money on cutting tools, carbide. If we change that bit in the middle, you know, change the tool holder, make it stronger, 
So stronger, you're not going to get pull out. You can start to push your process parameters further and further. But also take run out out of the equation, you know, 20 microns down to, to three microns, which we guarantee on a, a number of our products, five times tool life. So, so this is the sort of thing that, that, you know, it's all well and good me just saying this, you know, saying, yes, you're going to get better tool life. You're going to pull less power on your spindle. But really, we need to demonstrate that and show that to, to customers and prove that, um, you know, but we'll put our money where our mouth is. Invest and, and that's what you can do here. Exactly that. That's exactly what you can do here. And Jamie, just tell us quickly the products that you do have from Nick and at Claro um, as a collective. You so mentioned a few of them. but We currently have some of the slim chucks. We've got just taken delivery of a new presetter. Uh, we've got five axis units, um, angle heads. Uh, just ordered a boring head as well. So, and, and do you find as a manufacturing business at the moment, and, and do you get involved in this area where, you know, um, people are talking now about the costs of, uh, of energy, um, you know, the, the more spindles turning, the, the more that's going to cost. Is there a way of getting more out of one spindle than using two? Is there, do, do you get involved in these types of things? And are they real-time issues at the moment that are being they spoken are, about? They are at the moment. For Clara, personally, it's about keeping the spindles turning. And that's where the tool life is a big advantage for us. And obviously with the pre-setting, being able to set tooling offline, um, and, and be ready just to keep the machines running constantly. That's, that is a major challenge. Um, well, that's a, going to be my next question. I'm going to ask both of you, so I'm going to start with you, Nathan. Tool setting in the machine or tool setting offline? Where, 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 does, where and which is best and where do they fit? There's probably space for both, um, but I would always advise setting tools offline. And just as Jamie said, keep that spindle running making you money you know producing parts parts you can sell if you're using that spindle to set and measure tools it's a it's a cost but not just a cost in time a cost because you're not producing um we've we've have quite a handy calculator where if you punch into that you know your your operator rate your machine rate how much time you spend per shift setting tools it'll tell you really the overall cost and, and where can people find that you just can find that curiosity. online so on okay. our website or, or obviously all of our local uh, reps have that all of our business managers the team here at the innovation center have access to that um, but it'll give you a number and it'll say this is the, what it's costing you in setting tooling on your machine tool by taking that offline setting on a on a presetter you're going to save that you know the payback on a presetter is is normally pretty quick you know we're talking weeks or, or months certainly not years really that fast um and, and the additional benefit if you tie that in with tool management software you can start to capture a lot more data uh, data so reinspect your tool once it's been on machine how's my wear looking can i use that for a little bit longer and all of this sort of forms part of that total solution and, and optimization of your process. And, and do you do that, Jamie? So are, are you now getting in, involved in these things? And I'm a, this is kind of the data's important, digital, uh, you know, you did, going forward to um, Industry 4.0, all of those things. Is that something that we talk about a lot, but are you practicing it in, yes. in manufacturing companies? So us particular, so we do also a lot of process improvements, so which is, you know, we look at what we're currently doing and, and how it's best to improve it for us. But to be honest, you know, it works across the board. You know, most manufacturing companies will be looking at the same thing. Um, you know, we're looking at what is the best way to make the solution better. So, you know, the offline setting, we are DNC linked, so all our machines are linked to our presetter. So we've got a guy who works in our tool room. He's setting, uh, setting the tools and they're sat ready, so once the machine has finished the job that it's on, tools come out, tools go in, you load your preset tool sizes, and you're proving out, and you're, you're aware, so it's, it's, you know, it's mostly about just reducing that amount of machine downtime. And how do you make a business lean in addition to that with the technology? I mean, you've been here today with three of your colleagues. Are you all doing similar roles? Have you all, you know, you're all tasked to do different things What's, what's the setup? Because it's a, a long time since I've been on the shop floor and I was one man, one machine. That, that, you know, that, was, that was how it worked then. What's it like at your place? So we aren't very automated where we are, we do a, but we do a lot of small batch work. So it is, there's a lot of setting up going on for us, but we are currently looking at automation. What can we do to just keep things running, maybe running 24 hours a day? We have a couple of machines that will run 24 hours a day 
Um, but and is this on milling and turning? Do you do? Turn, I mean, yeah. even on your turning, do you know? I mean, a bar feed is automation. Do so you, we have do, uh, a Nakamura that has a gripper system on it, so that runs 24 hours a day. Uh, it has a full unload system on it as well. Um, so yeah, so we load a meter length of bar, and that will run for 22 hours on its own. Um, and how's the market at the moment, Nathan? Uh, a lot of people coming through your doors, a lot of people, what, what's the trends? What are they after? Um, what are you seeing? At the moment, people want to save money. I think everything is getting more and more and more expensive. I mean, all you've got to do is turn the news on and, and you'll see, I think we're all feeling it personally at home, but the same in business. So, you know, energy prices are going up, material prices are going up, staff costs are going up. So really now is a time where people are looking at how to make the most of what they already have, you know, how to become more efficient, how to produce more for less or more for the same amount. You've got the super tax deduction for any sort of capital equipment. So presetters, rotary tables that are delivered before the end of March next year. So, you know, time's kind of running out on that. So at the moment, I think the trend is, is an upward trend of people through the door. Um, really looking at how to improve what, what they already have. Mm. Um, and, and finally, from yourself, Jamie, uh, coming here, what sort of experience is it? And, and why should manufacturing engineers, and not just manufacturing engineers, company owners, CNC operators and setters, why should they be coming to uh, places like this? Because you'll visit exhibitions, I assume, you'll look online, you'll do all the things that, that people do. But um, what's, what's the difference? The layout's great. You know, you come in and from a manufacturing side, you know, it's, everything's here. You, you know, they can give you a good demonstration of tool holding, the rotary tables for your three axis machines to upgrade, uh, presetting, which is something that a lot of companies don't do. It's something that, sh you know, it should be done. Uh, and, and it's making your business really competitive. What would the, the guys at the Pexian Group now be wanting you to say about what Claro Precision can offer the market? Because there'll be thousands of people that will download and listen to this. Putting you, you're in the elevator room or we, the elevator pitch or whatever yeah, well, they say. Uh, we, can offer, we can offer you whatever, you know, whatever. To be honest, we're, um, we, we, we're all set about and try and have a go at anything. And I think if we can't do it, we tend to then pass it on to other companies in the Pexian Group and somebody will be able to do anything. There you have it. A manufacturing engineer and a salesman all in one. Um, so. Gentlemen, it's been really good. Um, Nathan, if people do want to come here, you know, they can see what they can see behind us here easy to pick up the phone get yeah. yourself here we're, hop in the car and bring up your drawings and and see whether you can make those efficiencies we're a big open plan facility you know we're glass fronted there's nothing to hide here what you see is what you get you know come and have a look around just just get in touch good stuff thank you very much gentlemen for joining me um that's it for another uh, mtd cnc podcast um thanks guys it's been thoroughly enjoyable and very educatory i would say thank you very thank much thank you very much Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.